Hi, my name is Charlie Band, and I hope you've enjoyed our film. I'm talking to you for the first time at the beginning of this full moon video magazine, which we're all very excited about. What really inspired us to do something like this is we've had such great response in the past from you people, both on the making of Meridian, Crash and Burn, and Puppet Master, that we felt between the making of and our merchandising program that it'd be more entertaining, really, and informative for all of you to see more of what goes on behind the scenes here at Full Moon. Everybody involved in Full Moon is a real passionate filmmaker. And as a result of that, all our pictures are made in-house. Uh, we don't acquire films and wind up buying movies from other producers. We really make our films, we design them, we create the effects, the storylines, and we physically make the movies. But right now, I think you'll want to hear about the making of Puppet Master. You'll want to meet some of the directors who are making some of our upcoming films. Stuart Gordon, who's involved in The Pit and Pendulum. Uh, Ted Nicolau, who is doing subspecies in Romania. Later on this year, I'm going to be directing Trancers 2, The Return of Jack Death, which I'm very excited about. So there'll be a lot of information for you people to look at, and I hope you enjoy our magazine, and we'll see you next time. Some new facts have been unearthed about the horrible occurrences at Bodega Bay. Villainous puppets are back. Jester, Blade, Leech Woman, Pinhead, Tunneler, with a mission to bring back the Puppet Master from the grave. And this time, they brought a friend, Torch, the hottest puppet around. A team of parapsychologists is sent to investigate the lunatic ravings of the now insane Professor Alex Whitaker. Want to go home, Wanda? Don't forget, <laughs> Whitaker did see something, something that drove him out of his mind. Alex Whitaker was nuts, man, period. That's what we're here to find out. Special effects wizard David Allen, nominated for his work in Steven Spielberg's The Young Sherlock Holmes, steps into the role of director for Full Moon Entertainment's Puppet Master 2. I'm enjoying it. I feel like it's something I would like to do more of. I enjoy working with actors, but the puppets, it's a whole different thing. A different satisfaction, a different fulfillment. As with the original Puppet Master, the puppets were designed and fabricated by David Allen Productions. These puppets are all manipulated in various ways. There's all, all sorts of tricks we use. Uh, we use rods here to get articulation from behind the camera, we're just hiding them where we can. We use cable controls, which can make, you know, when I squeeze the cable, the mouth moves. Uh, just whatever kind of tricks we can get away with. We're not afraid to use wires, we're not afraid to use mirrors or anything that we have to to get a little bit of magic on the screen here. All right, well, this is not as it appears here. At no time in the movie is there an army of torches. What we're revealing here is, is one of the tricks of the trade is that there's no way to make one puppet do all that this guy is going to do during the movie. So what we actually do is have many different models to serve different purposes. I'm holding on to the stunt puppet here. This guy you can abuse and punch and throw around. And uh, next to this is the RC puppet, which is all radio control motors. It just works uh, almost by magic. Chris is holding on to the rod puppet, and you can make them walk. You can make them you know, essentially do anything with the rod puppet. And then at the very end of the table would be the actual flamethrower, which is the real tour de force of this guy. We're actually, um, this guy is actually blowing a flame that's about 10 feet long out of his arm. And uh, that's, that's, I think, going to be the highlight of this, is seeing this tiny little puppet, who could be afraid of this guy, blowing things up. No need to keep our presence a secret any longer. Soon, soon, 
you will regain your full strength. And now, back into the cabinet. Actor Steve Wells endures hours of special effects makeup and head wrapping in order to portray the evil puppet master, Andre Toulon. I found being behind the mask terribly liberating. I understood then why the Greeks did it, because it truly does obliterate your own identity, any, any kind of uh, personal narcissistic message you may have for the audience. Forget it, you're not gonna get it through with the mask. No one except a woman who calls herself Carolyn will escape. As for the stupid young man with the vain hope for her heart, you, Torch, you will deal with his burning desires in a most appropriate way. Actor Colin Burnson plays Michael, Toulon's rival for the affections of the beautiful Carolyn Bramwell. You sort of get this great little feeling of these animated things that live in cabinets, and, and when this master pulls them out and gives them the fluid, they have life to them. Unfortunately, I have to blow them all away, and that's, that's why, uh, that's what happens. I, I have to get rid of all these guys so that I can, well, I, I take it back. Some of them, some of them actually survive. Uh, some of them actually survive, therefore possibly a Puppet Master 3, I don't know, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Yes, we're planning to make a sequel again to Puppet Master, a part three, and hopefully we'll be making a part four and a part five. Uh, we're finding that in a lot of ways our pictures, our full moon features, are like comic books where you get familiar with the characters and the creatures and the effects, and it's fun to see them come back and do more things. This thing is completely self-contained. Just gears and wood, mostly. Not even any motors. It's amazing. Elizabeth McClellan plays a beautiful parapsychologist who, off camera, found the puppets interesting. You have to sort of relate to them as another fellow actor in a way, you know? It's strange. <laughs> it's strange. I go home and I see stuffed animals and I, I don't know about this. I get my, um, my head um, drilled through and my brains um, eaten out. And uh, actually, it's kind of, you don't actually see it happen. Uh, Wanda hears that she's going down the hall, and we've just had a romantic interlude. And she hears me uh, kind of flop and thud down on the floor, and she runs back in. And I'm lying there with my brains coming out the side of my head, and a small puppet uh, played by Blade is playing with my brains. Not a, not a fun thing. I am uh, pummeled by Pinhead, <laughs> not a pun, but Pinhead has very strong arms, little fists, and breaks my kneecaps, and that's how I die, and I love it. You know, I mean, it was kind of invigorating. foot-tall creature named Tunneler takes a running start into my forehead when I'm asleep and uh, what they're putting on me now is the makeshift funeral that occurs after the fact but um, I really don't know what hit me literally <laughs> puppet named Blade, which is absolute coolest dressed one, okay, um, kills me, sucks my brain and stabs me, I, my eyeballs, and, and I die. A dangerous but challenging side effect of having a character like Torch is working with fire on a small contained area, such as a movie set. Stunt woman Janet Lee Orchid carefully rehearses the full body burn. She will double the character Martha, who is one of the many victims of Torch's fiery arm. Okay! Good job, baby. 
Two life-size mannequins, played by real-life actors, are required for the ultimate surprise of Puppet Master 2. They have waited for decades. Waited just for you, Elsa. The diabolical Puppet Master plots the ultimate double cross on his murderous puppets. He is keeping the serum the puppets have killed for, to use for his own immortality and Elsa's. You see, I must keep my promise to Elsa. Your hard work has not been in vain. Of course, you may let her into dry wood, but you've given me back my wife. But the puppets have their own surprise for the puppet master. Come back with that! And they give it to him with no strings attached. No! Well, Edgar Allan Poe's story, The Pit and the Pendulum, has always been one of my favorite stories. It's a fantastic tale about a man who is uh, undergoing the tortures of the Spanish Inquisition and uh, encounters one of the most incredible and, and bizarre torture devices that ever was dreamed up. And so what we did was we developed the character of the man who invented the pendulum and the pit, uh, Torquemada, who was the Grand Inquisitor, who actually invented the Inquisition as well. And we decided that he was the, uh, the way we describe him as the Michelangelo, the Leonardo da Vinci of torture. And uh, he uh, develops all sorts of strange devices, each of which is uh, uh, intended to strike total fear into the victim's heart. Lance Henriksen will be playing Torquemada. And uh, Lance, uh, I think, is, is known uh, by all of the fans of horror films. He's done many, many of them. Uh, some of his best known are uh, Near Dark, in which he plays the leader of the vampires. Uh, Aliens, where he plays uh, Bishop the android, uh, who turns out to be a good character. Uh, and he's also in uh, Johnny Handsome, uh, playing the, uh, the villain in that as well. The other person I think a lot of fans of horror films will recognize is Jeffrey Combs. Uh, who was Herbert West in uh, Reanimator, and uh, he's going to be back as Francesco, the scribe who writes down all of the confessions that uh, these poor people make while undergoing torture. I, I think there are some similarities between this movie and Reanimator. I think that uh, the dark humor that uh, permeated Reanimator is going to be present here again. Uh, I think that it's impossible to deal with a subject that is this bleak uh, and, and terrifying without being able to laugh uh, to relieve the tension. Greg Canham uh, is our makeup artist, and uh, he's best known for, for his work on Lost Boys. And uh, he uh, has come up with some amazing things for this movie. I don't think I want to give too many of them away, but uh, there will, we will see the, the dead walking in ways that you've never seen them before. And uh, the horrors of the Inquisition portrayed uh, very realistically. Uh, I, one of the things I found in researching this film is that the things that the people actually did to each other is far worse than any of the uh, fantasies and that people have uh, dreamed up in horror films. My goal as director is to keep it entertaining because I don't think that you can have a, you can get a message across if it is uh, too bleak. I think that uh, my goal, like Pose, would be to have the audience on the edge of their seats or under them. From Stuart Gordon, the director of Reanimator, and Edgar Allan Poe, author of The Raven, comes a new vision of classic terror. The Holy Inquisition finds you guilty of heresy. <coughs> a madman's lust. Take off her clothes. <coughs> a woman's innocence. Confess to me that you are a witch. I'm not a witch. In the heart of the Spanish Inquisition. Fear God, fear his wrath. 
In Christ's name, I beg you. Have mercy. Arrest her. No. His battle for her soul. Ah. Maria is like an angel. Satan was an angel. We'll set a world on fire. Look into hell! And create evil's ultimate weapon. I've decided to christen my newest device with your blood. The pit and the pendulum. You swore you'd show mercy? In this place, death is mercy. God, why? The Pit and the Pendulum, coming soon from Full Moon Entertainment. Pinhead. Blade. Ms. Leech. Jester. And Tunneler. <laughs> Irene Miracle, Paul Lamatt, Barbara Crampton, and William Hickey as the Puppet Master. It can assume physical nature of human thought. Become any size, any shape it wants. It became what Kidwell was looking for. There's no way out. <laughs> Louise Fletcher, James Hong, Sean Weatherly. Shadow Zone. She will awaken a curse of passion. Oh. I will become a creature. It's a superstition, a ghost story. To break this curse, the creature must be killed by the Lady of the Castle. I love him. Now she must destroy something that isn't real. Kill this beast. No. To save a love that isn't human. Starring Sherilyn Fenn from Two Moon Junction. It's just a dream. It's just a dream. They will wage the final battle for our future. Torch. Well, Torch and I t are here to tell you today about some great merchandise that Full Moon has. We've got really killer t-shirts, okay, and awesome posters. You know you can order from your favorite movie, especially Meridian starring me. Ha! Huh? You should really, really check these things out, okay? You can get the killer t-shirt like the one I'm wearing, and then, you know, they come with, like, your favorite Full Moon movie on the back, and all your friends will go, "Real, that's a really cool t-shirt. Where'd you get it? And you'll go, <laughs> I saw this really cool chick on a video and she told me where to get it. And we have some killer posters too, you know, you decorate your walls and your rooms and stuff. And here are these, did you guys meet my friends? This is Blade and Pinhead and, and Jester and Tungler and this is, my, this is my baby, Torch. This dude right here just killed me, remember? Yeah, right. So how do you get this stuff? Here's how you get this stuff, you right too. Please send your inquiries about our merchandise and joining the Full Moon Fan Club to Full Moon Entertainment, P.O. Box 526, 8721 Santa Monica Boulevard, 
West Hollywood, California, 90069. And be sure to pick up the Puppet Master comic book from Eternity, containing the all-new adventures of Andre Toulon's terrifying troupe in full bloody color. It's the beginning of the full moon age of comics. Um, don't forget to write to me too, okay? Bye.